Cameroonian boxer Francis Ngannou served opponent Stipe Miocic from America with ferocious punches in Las Vegas to become the first African to win the UFC Heavyweight World Championship title. Revenues from tourist destinations in Cameroon have witnessed a drop with the resistant presence of the tumultuous COVID-19 pandemic even as the fight rages on. And Christians around the country are exhorted to emulate the example of Jesus Christ, that of humility and selflessness as they celebrate Palm Sunday. Good evening and welcome to the 730 News. Those were the headlines. I am Benin Bumagana. Despite our efforts, COVID-19 plunged many families into mourning and seriously hampered the functioning of our economy and society. Once again, welcome. Cameroon's heavyweight boxer Francis Ngannou is the new world heavyweight champion in the Ultimate World Championship. He defeated his American opponent and defending champion Stipe Miocic early this Sunday morning in a fight in Las Vegas. With this victory, Francis Ngannou becomes the first African to win this title. Details with you, Baldwin Sama. From Hassan Ziga to a world heavyweight champion in the Ultimate Fighting Championship, Cameroonian mixed martial champion Francis Nganyu overpowered Stipe Myosic to win the world heavyweight title. His ultimate punch on his opponent's face, just six minutes into the fight, put an end to the defending champion's emblematic mastery in this category for several years, making his victory one of the fastest against a defending champion. Francis Nganyu now counts five consecutive five-round knockouts after blowing away his time message. Never had an African won this title before, and just like every other legend, Francis Nganyu's victory had to be a pace setter. It's been a long journey basically since the last, uh, in the past three years. I've been obsessed by, by this, but you know, now that is here, I, I guess that I'm going to uh, settle down, take a time before, like really enjoy it. Nicknamed the Predator, this native of Bati in the west region of Cameroon left the country over 10 years ago. He faced some challenges but pursued with his dream that of one day becoming a world champion. His courage and determination have put him at the summit after 16 victories and just three defeats. Congratulations to Francis Ngannou. The National Institute of Statistics estimates that between April and May 2020, 71% of the jobs affected by the COVID-19 pandemic were in the segments of lodging and recreation, all in the tourism domain. In Cameroon, like in other parts of the world, proprietors of recreational sites say activities continue to be slow in spite of some measures taken to alleviate the situation. Sinta Saptala says more. Travel restrictions due to the COVID-19 pandemic continues to impact tourism industries worldwide. In the capital city, Amundi, at this travel agency, the numbers are worrisome. Only five international flights for the African continent this week. How does one survive when working on commissions? When all the sectors of the tourism industry is completely down, you can imagine that um, we lack activities. And for hotels like these, whose clientele are mostly foreigners, fewer flights implies more empty rooms for longer periods. In our hotel, 75% uh, of the, uh, the customers were uh, coming from outside of the Cameroon. So it's difficult for us because uh, it's dropped the attendance of our hotel. Same observation at some entertainment infrastructures. At this restaurant, the manager says it's been challenging with just five to seven customers daily for an open buffet and monthly bills to pay. In the past, we have many uh, wedding parties, but from the last year until now, we have only one 
uh, wedding party. So to meet up proprietors in these respective sectors have been forced to make changes, one of which was to reduce the personnel and make propositions for a local clientele. We need to re-educate uh, Cameroonian, you know, about tourism. We try to value the, um, the other area of the hotel, not only the rooms, but also the restaurant. Despite these efforts, the impact of the current health pandemic is considerable, according to them, even with government's efforts in 2020 to assist the sector. Thank you very much, Cynthia Saptala. And over in the far north region, the COVID-19 pandemic has dealt a severe blow to the tourism and leisure sector that was gradually picking up with the weakening of the Boko Haram sect. The sector noticed a drop of more than 9,000 clients in 2020 as compared to 2019 with a decrease of about 150 million CFA francs within the same period. Henry Tato Ekambi has a transcript of the situation in the far north region. It is a severe knock that COVID-19 is giving to the tourism and leisure sector that was struggling to stand up thanks to the gradual return of CAM with Boko Haram being rendered less potent. Of 2018, we went up to 45% to 75%. When this crisis of COVID started, we are not up to 40. A decrease in thousands of clients and hundreds of millions of CFA friends in revenue was also noticed in the space of 365 days. In 2019, we have registered 53,000 arrival. 2020, we registered 43,000 arrival. They drop in terms of revenue represent uh, 100 million. Some in the sector have now resorted to other activities so as to be able to put food on their table. Coronavirus. COVID is even worse than Boko Haram. It has made things difficult for us tourist guides. We are surviving through our connections and other activities. Stakeholders of the tourism and leisure sector in the region that is home to internationally recognized tourist sites like the Waza National Park are now hoping COVID-19 ends fast so that the sector can continue its recovery process from the Boko Haram atrocities. Let's stay in the north and this time in the north region to see the work of al sectum of the customs in the country that has been doing a great work so far. This time, uh, besides tracking down counterfeit goods, they've tracked down the uh, forbidden uh, harvest of uh, pangolin in that area. Let's get to find out more with Wilson Mengole. After the north customs sector pinned down a suspect with 42 bags of pangolin skins worth over 4 billion francs CFE and route to a neighboring country. Governor Jean Abate Izi descended on the field to take stock of the situation. It is not acceptable to see some economic operators are done. We cannot accept different activities to implement disorder. I encourage customers to be strong to put in place innovative action. The North Customs sector has increased vigilance to stop the entry of illegal goods into the country and to boot out transnational organized crime syndicates. The Customs Administration is not sleeping. At our level, all goods on exportation, we make sure that firstly the documents are well studied and secondly we try to look at the goods, try to do a physical examination to see before the goods pass. Almost all the sectors in Cameroon. As transnational organized crime networks continue developing new ideas to beat customs intelligence, customs officials in the north are on the alert with innovative ideas to counter their move. I urge you once again to put on your face masks, to wash your hands regularly, and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus.
come and this news cast. But this time, let us uh, get to meet Bordu Insama, who says, still in our fight against COVID-19 pandemic, we are in the campus of the University of Boya, where they're talking about the epidemiological situation on campus since the outbreak of the virus in Cameroon. Bordu Insama is in one of the science laboratories in UB with his guest, Dr. Henry Dilonga. Hello, Baldwin. Good evening. We are still on the campus of uh, the University of Boya, where we try to have an idea as to the epidemiological situation on the campus of this university ever since we had the outbreak uh, for the coronavirus in this part of the country. And our guest tonight is Dr. Henry Dilunga Meriki, a public health uh, scientist and the head of uh, the laboratory of uh, the incident management system as far as uh, COVID-19 is concerned in the southwest region of Cameroon. Good evening to you, Doctor. Good evening. Ever since we had the outbreak of uh, COVID-19 in this region, let's the emphasis on the campus of the University of Boya, what's the epidemiological situation so far? In that first wave, the statistics that we have for our university are students who went for internship, the medical students, we could have statistics of some of them. A few of them were tested, about 100, where we have a high prevalence of about 12%, and some few lecturers who also had symptoms and came forward for testing, also tested. And then out of uh, 674 staff who have been screened, we have about 18. That brings us to about, both to about 2.8%, which is lower than what we have in the region, 5.6%. And uh, we are, the, the screening is ongoing, and one of the challenge we have is test kits that we don't have enough in the region. We have plans to screen even more. Thank you so much, Doctor, for accepting to be a guest this evening with the different measures taken by the University of Boya these days. They are telling signs that officials from the university are poised to limit the spread or to avoid a possibility where the virus can easily spread in the higher education sector, especially on the campus of the University of Boya. Back to you. Thank you very much, Baldwin Sama van Cayman. Members of the Medical Council in Cameroon have expatiated on the situation of COVID-19 in the country and ways of halting its spread. The press conference in Yaoundé Friday was granted by the President of the National Medical Council, Dr. Sanjong Gi. From the press conference, here is an excerpt of Jebet Jules, another doctor. We are trying to explain to the population the safety measure we can lead to decrease the severity and the importance of this disease uh, named COVID-19. We have too much professionals of health who are dying because of the situation of uh, um, this, this fight. According to the vaccination, there are too much information around. This is a new disease. We don't know too much about, but the scientists have pushed their research, and now for people who are at high risk, for professionals of healthcare, we recommend these professionals to take the vaccine. And graduating students of the training schools for health personnel in Limbe have been called upon to put into practice the knowledge they have acquired with the fear of God in them as they get into the job market. And Dr. Jali says there were 134 trainees in this report. The graduation ceremony comprised of 62 trainees of the 28th batch of state registered nurses, 31 trainees of the 30th batch of the School of Assistant Laboratory Technicians, and 41 trainees of the 45th batch of the School of Nurses Assistants. The directors of the training schools say the success achieved were not void of challenges. The training was not easy, but the students move successfully throughout the academic year. We had many challenges from the numerous lockdowns, COVID-19, 
shut down. We are confident that those we are sending will meet the challenges. They will be up to the tax to serve humanity and provide health care to the population. The best graduating students are happy that their hard work paid off. I'm so happy because this year was not easy. Finally, by the grace of God, the, the year ends well. Very happy. I'm very excited to get into the work world. The representative of the Southwest Regional Delegate of Public Health had this advice. The theoretical aspect that these students have been doing while in school has to be put into concrete reality while on the field. The graduates are now faced with the ethics and principles attained to practice their profession faithfully with the fear of God. Now on to one of our lead stories. Today is Palm Sunday. The Christians believe that Jesus Christ entered triumphantly into Jerusalem on a cult for his last journey to the cross. At the Our Lady of Victory Cathedral in Yaoundé, Catholic faithful were called upon to emulate Jesus' example of humility and selflessness. Details with Alice Mbe. The Passion Sunday at the Lady of Victory Cathedral Church this morning was observed by the blessing and waving of palm branches, symbolizing the branches placed in front of Jesus as he triumphantly entered into Jerusalem. He was welcomed with, uh, with all the people with palm to show that he is a king. Some were throwing on the floor their dresses. And today is a memory day, the day of his passion. The Christians were called upon by Reverend Father Marcel Valet Etungui to be humble and passionate in Christ. The message this morning talks of humility. Jesus, who was humble in the Lord, died on the cross for our sins. The same crowd that followed Jesus is the same crowd that asked for his crucifixion. We should not revenge against our enemies because good things are never to be regretted. This first day that begins a holy week and the Sunday before Easter symbolizes victory, triumph, peace and eternal life. Faithful of the Eglise Presbyterian G. Cameroon Marie Goke have also been exalted to emulate Jesus' life of simplicity and remain steadfast in prayers for Cameroon. The co-moderator of the church, Reverend Guy Machuren Golo, was today's preacher on the celebration of Palm Sunday. Victor Sigar reports. Faithful of the Eglise Presbyterian to Cameroon celebrate the triumphant entry of Christ Jesus into Jerusalem. Christians are enjoined to remain steadfast in prayers for peace in Cameroon. The Palm Sunday is a day we celebrate Christ and subsequently prepare the Holy Week. So we called on Christians to pray a lot, especially for our country, hard hit by the socio-political crisis. Associated with the blessing and possession of palms, the co-moderator Reverend Guy Maturengolo urge attendees to make a retrospective of their lives as they get into the Holy Week that sets the pace for the Easter. According to Christians, Palm Sunday is a celebration to honor Jesus' victorious entry into Jerusalem, which took place towards the end of his days on earth before being crucified. We stay in Yaoundé, in Yaoundé, where Christians of PCC Bastos have been encouraged to be ambassadors of peace in the country. This Palm Sunday's meditation was drawn from the Gospel of Mark by Reverend Anyata Nicodemus. Details with Romeo Kenye. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. PCC Bastos Congregation Faithful celebrate Christ's triumphant entry into Jerusalem this Palm Sunday. The meditation is drawn from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 1 to 10. The preacher, Reverend Anyata Nicodemus, exhorts worshippers to be humble, steadfast in prayers, and be veritable peace crusaders in society. We are also praying very, very fervently that we are going to open our hearts, most especially in the times that we are living, the trying moments that we are living, so that God can travel and stay right in our hearts. Because if God is in our hearts, not only in our lips and in our heads, we are going to live in peace. Acclaiming Hosanna in the highest, palm branches consecrated in the service are symbols of joy and eternal life. 
Palm Sunday pave way into the Holy Week, which will be culminated with the celebration of Easter Sunday. Away from Yaoundé, Catholic faithful of Esong, a locality in Jum subdivision of the South region, have been called to emulate the humility of Mary, the mother of Jesus. This day, as the Bishop of St. Melema Diocese, His Grace Christopher, Christophe Zoa, celebrates Palm Sunday in the new cathedral that was partly built by Member of Parliament for the Ja and Lobo, Theodore Mbe Mendomo. Gerald Nanje Yambe reports. This is the newly constructed Marian cave housing the statue of Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, savior of mankind. While inaugurating and sanctifying the place, the bishop of the San Milima diocese said, the statue signifies the presence of Mary as the model of faith and an intercessor. She's there as a model of faith with the benediction and her glory. She to help us by good intercession for salvation. Handing the keys to the church, the CPDM member of parliament for Ja and Lobo said the gesture is in thanksgiving to God. Nobody is something without God. We have to recognize what God has done for us. We can come and pray. Sanctuary. The occasion which coincided with the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem faithful were enjoined to continue to adore him as the king of kings it was almost the same celebration at the glees avantis year in diaoundi where the faithful were called to follow jesus christ and be ambassadors of the lord jesus christ even here on earth alice may has the details there are six deacons and one church elder who have been commissioned to Christ after several years of saving the Lord. I'm very happy and satisfied. I will be at the service of Christians as well as the church. I thank God for his call in my life. I have been expecting this call ever since, and it has finally come. I will share the word of God with Christians. They have been called upon by the resident pastor to be good shepherds to the Christians. We are asking God to accept what the church have think they can serve. I want them to work in the church regularly, every time. The ceremony was also an occasion for some 40 leaders and head of different departments in church to receive end of course certificates after a week training in church management. Children selected from the Bamendankwe village, we are now in the northwest region, have received gifts donated by Bamenda based non governmental organization and the German partner Samaritan Purse. For details on that report, here now is Karin Tosam. These children have been schooled on the importance of upholding moral and religious values and have been commissioned to be ambassadors among their peers and families. I have received Bible and they have taught us that when you are sleeping with your family, you have to gather together and pray. When you get up in the morning, you have to pray. In the afternoon, when you are eating, you have to pray. The founder of Grace Charitable Organization says there is need to give children the right education in order to prevent them from going astray in the future. It's one of the ways to grow children in the way that they can be useful to their society and their families is to grow them in the word of God so that they can have good morals. So before giving those gifts to them and the Bibles, we have spent one week teaching them the word of God, teaching them how they can grow up in good moral conduct. The NGO also donated maize seeds and cassava cuttings for planting to queen mothers of the Bamendankwe Palace. We stay in Bamenda and Karin Tosam continues to tell us that some elites of Bafut municipal and administrative officials have issued an appeal to separatist fighters in the locality to drop their weapons and join the DDR center in order to benefit from the socioeconomic empowerment programs offered in the facility. Among the gifts were Bibles donated after a week's training on the importance of religious principles in children. Karin Tosam again. Economic activities are reported to have been slowed down in Bafut, with the market being inactive for close to four months now. Locals also complain of clandestine parks that have aggravated matters for them. 
administrative officials of the area have resolved to dissolve such commercial structures. There are some parks to be suppressed and others have been recommended to get functional, making the, the Insani Park operational, park at the uh, Bafu Market Square operational, and suppressing the park at Nso and that of uh, Bandua. They have also taken upon themselves to intensify sensitization messages. In our various developmental organizations, quarters, to beg our borders that are hiding to come out. Bafut subdivision is one of the main economic hubs of Mezam, cultivating close to 30,000 hectares of rice and extracting sand, which generates income to the municipality. 125 complete uh, computer sets have been distributed to five learning institutions in the Upper Plateau Division. The gifts from the Global Capacity Building Foundation of Professor Justin Difo were distributed in the presence of the resident representative of the African Institute of Computer Sciences, Amang Claude Abanda. Ngu Henry reports. The Barfusan International Festival on Filmmaking, FISI, generates interest like none before this year in domains like culture. The lively debates speak to the importance of the film festival, which is film festival, a factor of development. Pressmen gathered that the event had a motif, register for posterity, the savoir faire of the people of the West region. Cinema can be a source of wealth. So we should encourage uh, this activity. Young stars from the Institute of Fine Art in Fumban displayed their professionalism through which Cameroonians can make a living in fine arts. The governor of the West region, our Fonkal Gasson, loads the initiative. We've come up with uh, a wonderful location in terms of participation. We've had uh, the mobilization and the enthusiasm of uh, the population. We are looking forward towards the 10th edition. Categorized prizes are awarded to film producers during an artistic night. Homage is paid on the occasion to Wake Fongan, a brainchild of the festival who passed on recently. A spectacular fashion parade and the crowning of Miss Fisip 2021 pulls the curtains of the festival. And that was Radachi Tebok telling us about the ninth edition of the Bafusam International Festival of Independent Film, making, uh, making otherwise known by its French acronym as FICIB. We're going to come back to the computer story in our subsequent newscast. We've come to the end of this edition of the newscast where we heard a Cameroonian boxer Francis Ngannou served upon and Stipe Miosik with ferocious punches in Las Vegas to become the first African to win the UFC Heavyweight World Championship title. And that revenues from tourist destinations in Cameroon have witnessed a drop with the resistant presence of the tumultuous COVID-19 pandemic, even as the fight rages on. And the celebration comes as Christians around the country are exalted to emulate the example of Jesus Christ, that of humility and selflessness, as they celebrate Palm Sunday. Karine Olivia will be here at 8.30 for the news in French. From us, thank you very much. See you next Friday. you once again to put on your face masks, to wash your hands regularly, and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus.